universe. The actual size of the entire universe is unknown. It is possible to measure the size of the observable universe, estimated to be 93 billion light years in diameter. Our solar system is one of hundreds of billions of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. And Milky Way galaxy, which is our galaxy, which is one of at least 2 trillion galaxies in our observable universe. And we live on one planet in the solar system called Earth. But how did life begin? Or more correctly, we can ask how life begins on Earth. Because we don't know how many alien civilization living in the other planets. The easiest answer is the God did it. But whether life began on Earth or it came from a distant world, or it came by a fallen comet or asteroid. Did it start it with an electric spark? Because electric spark can generate amino acids and sugars from an atmosphere loaded with water, methane, ammonia, and hydrogen. This life began at deep sea vents because these vents are rich in chemical and thermal energy, sustain vibrant ecosystems. Is life have begun with smaller molecules interacting with each other in cycles of reactions? Is it the ancient collision that formed the moon may also have brought with it all the ingredients needed for life? The collision could also have imbued our planet with the carbon, nitrogen and sulfur needed for life to form? Yet, one of the biggest questions, how did life arise from inorganic matter? This film is the story of the birth of life on Earth. Life is old. The dinosaurs are perhaps the most famous extinct creatures. And they had their beginnings 250 million years ago. But life dates back much further. The oldest known fossils are around 3.5 billion years old 14 times the age of the oldest dinosaurs. But the fossil record may stretch back still further. In early 2017, scientists found tube-like microscopic bacteria on hematite ore which is believed as the oldest fossils in the world. The scientists who found the fossils say that they are at least 3.7 billion years old and may even be older than 4 billion years. These scientists are hopeful that the new fossils will shed some insights into early life on Earth. 
if the fossils really are 4.2 billion years old, that means life created just after 300 million years after Earth creation. In the 19th century, biologists came to know that all living things are made of cells. Tiny bags of living matter that comes in different shapes and sizes. Though cells were first discovered in the 17th century due to first invention of modern microscopes. A microscope revealed that we all made of similar kinds of cells and similar case in plants and fungi. Similarly, in other end, we found life which is made up of just one cell. The bacteria, which are found everywhere on Earth. Again in 1799, scientists had discovered a chemical called urea, which is found in urine. 19th century, Charles Darwin, an English naturalist, geologist and biologist who developed the theory of evolution. Darwin, in 1859, explained how the vast diversity of life could all have arisen from a single common ancestor. Instead of each of the different species being created individually by God, they were all descended from a primordial organism that lived millions of years ago. But the same unsolved question like before Big Bang. Because his theory of evolution said nothing about how that first organism came into Earth. In 1924, Oparin published his book, The Origin of Life. Oparin imagined what Earth was like when it was newly formed. The surface was pairingly hot as rocks from space plunged down onto it and impacted. It was a mess of semi-molten rocks containing a huge range of chemicals including many based on carbon. Eventually, the earth cooled enough for water vapor to condense into liquid water and the first rain fell. After the earth's surface had cooled to a temperature below the boiling point of water, rain began to fall and continued to fall for centuries. As the water drained into the great hollows in the Earth's surface, the primeval ocean came into existence. The forces of gravity prevented the water from leaving the planet. Long before Earth had oceans, which were hot and rich in carbon-based chemicals, now two things could happen. First, the various chemicals could react with each other to form lots of new compounds, some of which would be more complex. Oparin imagined that the molecules essential for life, like sugars and amino acids, could all have formed in Earth's water. Second, some of the chemicals began to form microscopic structures. Many organic chemicals do not dissolve in water. For example, oil forms a layer on top of water. But when some of these chemicals contact water, they form spherical globules called coacivates, which can be up to 0.01 centimeters. 
If you watch coccoviths under a microscope, they behave like living cells. They grow and change shape and sometimes divide into two. They can also take in chemicals from the surrounding water so lifelike chemicals can become concentrated inside them. Oparin proposed that coccoviths were the ancestors of modern cells. Five years later, in 1929, the English biologist J.B.S. Haldane independently proposed some very similar ideas. Haldane told how organic chemicals could build up in water. The primitive oceans reached the consistency of hot dilute soup. This set the stage for the first living or half-living things to form. Harold Clayton Urey Harold Clayton Urey was an American Nobel Prize winner, physical chemist. Urey speculated that the early terrestrial atmosphere was composed of ammonia, methane, and hydrogen. Stanley Lloyd Miller Stanley Lloyd Miller was an American chemist made landmark experiments in the origin of life, which is called Miller Urey Experiment, supervised by Harold Urey at the University of Chicago. What was the experiment? The experiment used water, methane, ammonia, and hydrogen. The chemicals were all sealed inside a sterile 5-liter glass flask connected to a 500 milliliter flask half full of water. The water in the smaller flask was heated to induce evaporation and the water vapor was allowed to enter the larger flask. Continuous electrical sparks were fired between the electrodes to simulate lightning in the water vapor and gaseous mixture. And then the simulated atmosphere was cooled again so that the water condensed and trickled into a U-shaped trap at the bottom of the apparatus. After a day, the solution collected at the trap had turned pink in color. And after a week of continuous operation, the solution was deep red and turbid. The boiling flask was then removed and mercury chloride was added to prevent microbial contamination. The reaction was topped by adding barium hydroxide and sulfuric acid and evaporated to remove impurities. Miller identified five amino acids present in the solution. But why Miller do so and what it means? Miller's series of glass flasks and circulated four chemicals were present on the early earth. Boiling water, hydrogen gas, ammonia, and methane. He subjected the gases to repeated electric shocks to simulate the lighting strikes that would have been a common occurrence on Earth so long ago. Miller found that the water in the flask became noticeably pink after the first day. And by the end of the week, the solution was deep red and turbine. Clearly, a mix of chemicals had formed. When Miller analyzed the mixture, he found that it contained two amino acids, glycine and aline. Amino acids are often described as the building blocks of life. They are used to form the proteins that control most biochemical processes in our bodies. Miller had made two of life's most important components from scratch. But was by Miller's experiment we found the real truth behind origin of life? 
Probably not, because the early Earth's atmosphere had a different mixture of gases. Then after discovery of powerful electron microscope, it is found that life is more complicated than what Miller has thought. The Living Cells It is not just bags of chemicals, but it's an intricate little machines. Suddenly, making one from scratch began to look like a much bigger challenge than scientists had anticipated. Was Miller thought right? If he was right, then what about genes and DNA? Is origin of life so simple? Or till now we are not able to understand what life is and how it came. Please see Origin of Life Part 2 where I describe more deeply how life is created. But don't forget to subscribe my channel because your support is my inspiration. Bye!